Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning. I welcome you to today's devotion. Today is Monday 14, September 2020, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our text is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 2. The readings commence from verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, the readings commence from verse 5. The attitude you should have is the one that Jesus Christ had. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think by force he should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave us all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appears in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience to the way of death. His death on the cross. For this reason, God raised him and gave him the place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. So in the honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth, and in the world below, will fall on their knees and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Our topic for today's obedience brings glory. Obedience brings glory. Today is Holy Cross Day. Ross Lima once said, apart from the cross, there is no any other ladder which by we get to heaven. Cross is symbolic to Christianity. Today commemorate the recovering of the Holy Cross, which has been placed on Mount Calvary by St. Helena and preserved in Jerusalem. But it falling into the hands of Corinthians, king of Persia. The precious relic was recovered and returned to Jerusalem by Empire Herodos in 1629 AD. In verse 8, Christ humbled himself from the glorious form and divine form of human he, in order to die for sinful and corrupt human beings. He did it in obedience to his Father's will. To follow Christ, you too must be ready to obey him, even on to suffering. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. When we identify with Christ on the cross, sharing in his suffering through obedience, then you shall share in his glory. The opportunity to glorify God by our obedience should be one of our completely motives for living. Some people find it difficult to obey simple and godly instructions from their parents, so superiors, doctors, teachers, and pastors. But we must remember that these are also messengers from God to guide us through life. For you to glorify God there is no other way than to be obedient to Jesus Christ. You are stepped in obedience through thought. To follow through will bring glory to God and upliftment to you. Obedience brings glory. Obedience in a simple times means doing what God instructs you to do what God has commands you to do. Obedience is observing all the laws and the commands men of God. 
The highest and finest of this kind of obedience is only exemplified by Christ from the passage we read. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 11. Obedience brings glory to God if only we observe the laws. Only when you are in union with Christ, then you will be able to live an obedient life to God. According to John chapter 15, verse 5, Apart from me, you can do nothing. It remains in me, and I in you, you can produce much fruits. Only when we are walking with Christ, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, for you to live an obedience life, you need to work with God. You need to work with Christ. You need to work with Christ so that God will release the grace upon you, so that you can be able to live an obedience life for God. And your obedience to God brings glory to Him. And when you bring glory to God, in returns, God bless you. The only way we experience this obedience is when we experience the cross. The way of cross is the way of obedience. From our passage where we read, Jesus was obedient to God, faithfully submissive even to the point of death, dead on a cross because of his obedience. We as a children of God, we need to be humble, faithful and obedient to God. We need to submit. Obedience is sacrifice. We need to sacrifice our comfort and other things that we think we enjoy them, which they are not good. We need to sacrifice them to God. We need to sacrifice them because of our be obedience for God. The motives of obedience. The motive of obedience is to exemplify Christ in the world. That is the motive of our obedience to represent Christ in this corrupt world, to represent Christ in our life. That is the motive of our obedience. Second, to please God. For you to please God, you must live an example life. Without living an example life, obedience life, you can't please God. God expects that all his children should obey him. God desires that all his children should obey all his commands. This obedience is a disaster. The third one, obedience brings glory to God. When you glorify God, then God blesses you. When you glorify God, then God remember you. Disobedience brings a lot of sorrow. The reward for obedience. The reward for obedience includes one, long life. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 46 to 47. Obedience brings long life. When you obey God, you enjoy life. When you obey God, you live long. Like example, as we read from our pamphlet, doctors will instruct you, take your drugs three times a day, sometimes because of our carelessness, sometimes because of disobedience. We refuse and we end up in trouble. We refuse to obey simple instruction. That is why God says, we should obey in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. The Bible says, if only you can obey, just only if you can obey. There are a lot of benefits. There are a lot of blessings. Secondly, obedience brings God divine protection. When you obey God, God will give you divine protection. You will enjoy divine protection from above. God will be your guide. God will shield you from all evil. You will not experience any evil. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 13 to 17. The next is great joy. Psalm 119, verse 165. When you faithfully obey God, there is great joy in obedience. There is happiness in obedience. There is celebration in obedience. Because God will fill you with joy. The next is assurance of our salvation. Today we ask a lot of Christians, many Christians, so-called born-again Christians, if Christ will return today, will you be able to meet heaven? Say, I don't know. Why? Because of the life they live. Where is the promise of God? 
God promised that whoever believes in me, Jesus said, whoever believes in me, it is saved. Why are you doubting your salvation? It's because of the life you live. If truly you can faithfully obey God completely, you will have the assurance of your salvation because God has promised and he will not fail. Do you think God will deceive you? No. He has promise of salvation. But we don't have the assurance of salvation because of our lifestyle, because of the way we live, because of our disobedience to God. So for you to have the assurance of your salvation, you must obey God. The next is answers prayers. God promised to answer us. When we pray to God because of our obedience to God, the Bible says, even before you pray, I will answer you. But only for those who obey God, only for God who surrender unto God, only for God who sacrifice their comfort for God. That is obedience. Lastly, Consciousness of the presence of Christ. Many of us we have forgotten about the, the presence of Christ. If Christ is not with you, if Christ is not in you, definitely you can obey God. Christ can guide your life. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit, God will enable you. God will empower you. God will strengthen you to obey all the commands. They are not difficult. They are not hard. It's only that we are not ready to obey. All the commandments of God, they are not difficult for us to obey. All the laws, they are not difficult. We can obey them. It's because we are not ready to obey. But I want to assure you that obedience brings glory to God and blessing to you. As you obey God, you glorify God. In return, God blesses you. The next and the last is the consequence of disobedience. There are consequences in disobedience. When we refuse to obey God, when we disobey God, there are consequences. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But if you disobey the Lord your God and do not faithfully keep all his commands and laws that I'm giving you today, all these evil things will happen to you. Listen, all these evil things will happen to you. The Lord will cause your towns and your field. The Lord will cause your grain crops and the food you prepare from them. The Lord will cause you by giving you only few children, poor crops and few cattle and sheep. The Lord will cause everything you do. If you do evil and reject the Lord, he will bring on you disaster, confusion and troubles in everything you do until you are quickly and completely destroyed. He will send disease after disease on you until there is no one of you left in the land that you are about to occupy. See how terrible it is, how dangerous it is for you to refuse the commandment of God, for you to disobey the laws of God. See the disaster, see the, see, see the causes. But this is not the, the perfect will of God for you. The perfect will of God for you is to bless you. The perfect will of, of God for you is for you to enjoy life. And for you to really enjoy, you need the presence of God. And for you to enjoy the presence of God, you must live an obedient life to Him. That is the only way. That is the only thing you can do. To enjoy the presence of God, to enjoy the blessings of God, to enjoy the benefit of obedience, you must first obey. As I said earlier, obedience is sacrifice. Please sacrifice all those things that are making you to not to, to obey God. They are not good for you. They are not healthy. They are causing you problems. Abandon them and trust God. Abandon them and for, obey God. As I round up, my dear listeners, ask God for the grace so that you can faithfully obey God, so that by your obedience you can enjoy all the blessings of God, so that you can enjoy all the blessings of the benefit of obedience. There are a lot of benefits. Say this prayer with me. Lord, help me to obedience to your commands, no matter what it may take. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remain blessed.
We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 